Today's debate is about whether governments should be criminalizing jailing people because they choose not to take the vaccine because of one, misinformation, or two, distrust in the government. Instead of criminalizing vaccine denial, we are advocating as opposition for governments to ask themselves why people aren't taking the vaccine to answer their concerns to educate the masses. The proposition's policy not only infringes upon people's bodily autonomy and freedom of speech, but it's simply not an effective way of responding to people's concerns about the vaccine, and it's definitely not a more efficient way than the policy we've proposed. In my speech, I will do two things. Number one, I will examine the main clashes in this debate, which were about governments being actors and criminalizing vaccine denial, and two, the efficiency of criminalizing vaccine denial. And finally, I will do some weighing. So number one, first clash, government as actors in criminalizing vaccine denial. They've told you that governments would criminalize people, or in other words, put them through periods of imprisonment and exclusion from society for deciding to either spread misinformation about the vaccine, spread their criticisms about the vaccine, or not take the vaccine whatsoever. However, this policy that the proposition has offered you, panel, gives corrupt governments and governments with restrictive speech measures the power to imprison people. So what do these conditions actually look like? Because the proposition does not want to draw you what that actually looks like because they know that it's totally invasive and principally wrong. What that actually looks like is people and citizens being being removed from their homes, having their personal privacy and their comfort totally invaded. And so they're encouraging governments to overreach their power and abuse citizens' rights to bodily autonomy, like my third speaker explained, just because we can easily put someone down on the ground and, and vaccinate them and have them vaccinated does not mean that government should because government should respect people's bodily autonomy, their privacy and their rights to uh, privacy. Governments, we, what we've told you, however, is that governments criminalizing vaccine denial principally is just illegitimate because the reality is, is that if people, which is a small minority, are not taking the vaccine, it's because they're not sufficiently educated about the vaccine. The government info campaigns have been ineffective and so government education has failed causing distrust in the vaccine. And so the government can't punish you because it failed you. People can't help but deny vaccines given that the, given that the information they were fed was inefficient. So it's difficult to hold someone accountable for something that is hardly their fault and they have not engaged with this analysis whatsoever. Thus, propositions policy detracts the state from holding itself accountable. It shouldn't punish citizens for its own failures. It should address them and correct them. The use of violence to silence opinions from being voice is not principally viable, especially when those opinions exist largely because of government failure, which will amount to tyranny and oppression, not fair government. This is not a long term solution. And it's not an efficient one either. And so in terms of the efficiency of vaccine denial, the efficiency of criminalizing vaccine denial, they've told you that criminalizing people who don't want to take the vaccine will magically result in a decrease in COVID-19 cases of a rise in employment rates and economic growth without any mechanism. And so what we've told you actually is that their policy will do quite the opposite. Instead of actually encouraging people to take the vaccine, what their policy will do is just add fuel to the fire that is people's doubts about the vaccine. It'll encourage people who are already doubtful about the vaccine or who already distrust the government to not take the vaccine whatsoever or to avoid or find ways of not taking it. Or people who were initially okay with taking the vaccine might change their minds after seeing the government's radical punishments and consequences for vaccine denial. So people who were initially willing to take the vaccine will back out because of how eager the government is and how radical it is in the ways that it has enforced vaccination. So the final thing I want to do is some weighing. We believe we've won this debate, but even if you think uh, opposition proposition has, here are two things. Number one, we have the most long-term benefit. Criminalizing people by jailing them or ostracizing them from society only increases citizens' doubts. And number two, we have the greatest accountability. Like we've explained, governments criminalizing people who do not take the vaccine detracts the states from holding itself accountable. Proposition's policy strays away from responsibility while we take it face on. And so for all these reasons, we proudly stand for opposition. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much for your speech. Uh, speaker spoke for four minutes and 40 seconds. Um, now we'll have the final speech of today's debate given to us by Bonita. Go 
Okay, let me just set my timer right here. Okay, I will start in three, two, <clears throat> one. Opposition decides that human rights should be so important that even if these different human groups are going to be in danger, even if they bring about the active enforcement of this by government, it actually does the opposite. And how? Because of this active enforcement by government on our side of the house, people are going to be inclined to take this vaccine because they do not want to be on the receiving end of this punishment. For opposition to understand it better, it's a scenario where, let's say, a friend of mine gets punished for doing a certain thing. And because they've gotten punished for this certain thing, I'm going to make sure I don't do that so that I do not get punished. It's almost like that, right? So we see that so far, so for second opposition to bring this ideology of government forcing individuals to get this vaccine will cause them to refuse even more, holds no ground because this government holds a major strength in which this certain citizen does not have one. Yes, it may look like on our side we're the bad guys or the evil people in this debate because we're infringing on people's human rights. But you must understand that we're doing this for a particular reason. And that is something that we have made very clear from first speech. These same people that want to refuse a vaccine are the same people that might die because of these different thoughts that they have out. While we have made it clear from speech one that what we want mainly is safety, we feel like that is something that even if oppositions try to talk and talk and talk about it, this is something that still holds ground on our side. It is so easy to understand propositions case, right? Something we have made clear from the very beginning. It is all about safety. That's all anyone wants, right? And while safety is something that opposition clearly lacks, we feel that their case telling us not to force someone is still not solid enough for it. It is unfair that on opposition's world, vaccines are something that can be taken lightly. Conspiracy theories are what they are, conspiracy theories. But despite that, we feel that the, at the end of the day, people need to understand the importance of, you know, the government trying to make them take these different vaccines. Even if we were like, you know, breaching people's body autonomy, this vaccination is something that is a necessary evil. Even if we do like, even if we vaccinate different individuals from different backgrounds or religious, you know, societies, this is something that must be done because it's either refusing to take this vaccine and either getting reprimanded by the government or refusing to take this vaccine, even when you know that you're on, you know, the edge of death or something like that. These minority groups that opposition brings about in today's debate that might be wary of government or these conspiracy theories, the truth of the matter is that people need to make priorities. Is it life or is it going to be your doubt of the government? That is something that opposition has to think about in today's debate. We want to tell you that, yes, we may be actively like forcing these different people, but it is only for a good reason that we're doing these different things. This is something that we have made very clear from speech one, that life is something that we really want to preserve. But if that means that the government will use, you know, different tactics to preserve this life, then we are willing to do so. It is on those grounds that I've never been prouder to propose. Thank you.